baby. Woohoo! Very little guy, very nice. Twin otter. Comes flat nice and smooth, I thought the camera. Nice. Really like this thing. It's a very lightweight model. Like when you put it together and you kind of hold it in your hand, you, you get the, the feeling. You can tell it's, it's, a, it's a very light duty model, but it's built very well. Built nicely. Very smooth in the seat turn. Holy smokes. Unreal. I'm making speed dizzy. There we go. There we're talking. Now we're talking. Look at that. Outstanding. Holy smokes, let me bring it on in and talk about it a little bit. See what we can uh, show you guys with it. Hey guys, welcome back to the RC Informer YouTube channel. This is Rich, and today I have a really nice airplane to show you coming from Horizon Hobby in their E Flight lineup. This is their three cell powered twin otter. Very capable airplane, very affordable, and it's so nice because it comes with the tricycle landing gear that bolts on and off, and you'll see those grass demos on our channel. And you can swap it out really quickly for, as you can see, the included floats. I love float planes and I love multi-engine airplanes, and it's nice to have both of them together. And you can see here, I have these fitted. The reason I have it on the floats is I just put them on there and I'm getting ready to take this out to the lake and give you guys a float demo, which you guys can see at any time on the RC Informer YouTube channel once we get, once we get it filmed. You can also see all the associated videos of this airplane um, on the grass, on the pavement, and on the water up in the upper right hand corner of our video. If you click on that white eye, the information card right now even, you'll drop down a menu that'll show you those associated other videos um, in the series on this airplane. Anything we do on it's gonna be there. But I wanted to let you guys know now, down in the description of this video, I'm going to put a table of contents there because sometimes I do these videos that are a little lengthy. This one's going to be about an hour long. And if you want to watch it front to back, man, we appreciate it. That really supports our channel. We like it when you guys do that. But I want you guys to be able to skip ahead to the different phases of assembly, the unboxing portion, and the setup if you guys want to jump ahead. So anyway, without further delay, folks, let's get on to the, uh, the unbox, uh, the assembly and setup of uh, Horizon Hobbies Twin Otter. Hey folks, Rich here at RC Informer. Today I have a really sweet airplane to show you coming from Horizon Hobby from their E-Flight lineup. This is their 1.2 meter Twin Otter. Uh, this is a plane I've looked at for a little while. I always thought it was very sweet because very easy to fly with tricycle gear. It also has a, it's also a multi-engine airplane, which is just cool as heck. And on top of that, it includes the floats as well. I love multi-engine airplanes. I love float planes, so this is a, a double whammy. And again, the fact that it's tricycle gear, very easy airplane uh, to operate. Um, it's also AS3X with, uh, with uh, Safe Select. So for anybody that wants an easy plane to fly, multi-engine, tricycle gear, easy to handle, floats, this, this, this thing has it all. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip on my light switch here because uh, as you can see, I was getting some glare off this extra shiny box that they, uh, that they gave me here. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna take a look at uh, some of the specs on this and get it get all into this thing first um, there is a plug and play this is the bind and fly I'm gonna be showing you here today I'm gonna get really close on that there's your uh, there's your part number right there EFL 350 there uh, so if you guys want to get one of these I will put the links below our affiliate links if you click on those put in your cart and purchase through there we do get a, uh, a little commission out of it um, that does support our channel and we really appreciate you guys doing that for us um, uh, it has uh, two motors installed. We'll go over everything that's installed. Two brushless, and I wrote it in here, 1350 kV. So they're going to be some screaming props. And one of the cool things too is is that they're 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 multicolored. They're they're staggered with uh, striped paint. So they really will show up well. Especially you can see here on film, they really do do well show up. But uh, again, 1350 kV motors installed, two 20 amp brushless ESCs installed, servos, there's six 9 gram sub micros in installed, and the receiver is a Spectrum AR636 with AS3X and safe. So it's going to make it real easy to fly. You guys know I don't do a lot of uh, 
uh, a lot of, uh, actually I don't do really any stabilizers in my airplanes except for these Horizon ones that actually come with it and man, they're nice. I gotta admit, they make the plane a lot easier to fly and the Safe Select makes a, a, a really good uh, kind of training aid or even, uh, I guess you could call it sort of a fail safe if you lose sight of it or get a bug in your eye or something, you can flip that switch and the plane will right itself. It's a wing leveler. We'll talk about that here shortly. Um, transmitter. Uh, this is, these are the requirements right here. You can see uh, down below the receiver here. Transmitter requires full range of six, uh, five channels for plug and play and you need a DSMX or DSM and uh, DSM uh, two radio. I'm using the X of course, that's the latest. Batteries are 22 to 3200 three cell LiPo with either an EC or an IC, EC three or IC uh, three connector and of course you need a charger to charge up your battery and I'm going to flip this thing over to the other side of this where it talks about safe select where I've reviewed this with you guys a few times just skip past it if you've seen this but AS3X is the flight stabilization system safe select is what uh, limits your pitch and roll and it automatically self levels and makes the plane just very easy to fly especially in wind or if you're just getting used to the airplane or you're a beginner it's really great to have uh, for that so um, on the side here just get to the specs really fast here you can see the wingspans 48 inches or 1219 millimeters 36 inches long 993 long and uh, gives you the weight there and then of course here's your uh, your specs on the side uh, they talk about the six channel receiver here again safe select as an option which I'll activate AS3X flight stability um, twin brushless motors 3S and uh, six factory installed and ser servos uh, and linkages. I don't know if the linkages are installed. We have to install those ourselves. Tricycle fixed landing gear. It's not retractable gear. And then uh, it's got scale detail, so not, not retractable gear. Um, um, it does have um, a lot of detail. We'll talk about that as we look at it. Corrugations and stuff like that. Easy assembly. No tool. Uh, and, uh, and no tools are required for field assembly. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that. It's easy assembly. You might need a couple. Well, let's look at it. You got to at least need a screwdriver to put this thing together, I think. And then here's a couple pictures on the side. I love these, this photo here. It really shows you how nice of a plane this looks with the floats on it. I am dying to get this out to the water with those striped props, that blue, blue and white paint job. And then of course, if, if, if you want an easy plane to fly, tricycle gear is the way to go over tail dragger for sure. So this thing has it all, stall fences, wing fences, uh, additional vertical surfaces on the tail. Uh, just an awesome model overall. So let's get into this thing. Let's take a look at this thing out of the box. You can see it's pretty nicely packaged. A little different from some of the ones I've been doing lately just because it's, uh, it's got all the bags wrapped around it. And that's okay, that just protects it a little bit. Uh, first thing off the bat, I noticed the prop uh, these uh, prop uh, shafts and stuff. Um, I'm missing a nut right here, and these are actually threaded opposite, so you wanna look really carefully. Probably one fell off and it's probably in the bag somewhere. Oh, there it is right there. So make sure uh, as you're taking bags off of this, you don't lose the nut, okay, for one of them, because I think they're reverse or counter-rotating propellers, so you don't wanna lose that one. You might not be able to get another one like it if it's the reverse uh, direction. So uh, a couple parts, bags here. There's your nice props, props and spinners, and landing gear and instructions, and your, uh, your looks like your uh, uh, float mounting uh, uh, struts and everything right here. Um, there's something here that is not in there in an empty bag. That's weird. Uh, there's a bind plug down in the bottom of the box. Just make sure you look for all this stuff. I'll put that aside. And then I'll get into here the floats. Floats look real nice. Uh, we'll get those out. We'll put those aside. There is a push rod here that I'm going to have to peel away and get, uh, get on there. I'll pull that out later because I don't want to tear that up and I'll, I'll get it aside. And then the main fuselage. Actually, here's the horizontal right here. We'll pull that out. That looks real nice. A little corrugation detail there. And uh, I'll pull that rod out of there. But let me go ahead and lay out all the parts, folks. And we'll take a look at everything in much greater detail. Here's all the parts laid out that came out of the box. And as you can see from it, it's a real simple assembly. Just a bunch of screws, you put it together. You may need a dab of foam safe CA or contacts or foam, uh, foam tack somewhere in here. Uh, but for the most part, it's gonna screw together fast. There's not much to it. Um, but really nice overall. Really liking what I'm seeing. I did find the nut, as we saw, I screwed that back on. 
Um, those props are counter rotating. We'll get into more detail as we talk about that. Start here at the bottom is the uh, fuselage um, with your, uh, I think, rudder and elevator servo, I think, are installed in there already. Pre painted, decals applied, AS3X is in there. Your nose gear mount is in there. It's fixed gear, but the mounting is in there. Um, you got your horizontal stabilizer right here and uh, elevator package. There's your rod. That rod is actually for your rudder uh, or your water rudder for your floats. When you put the floats on, it actually connects through the nose gear uh, belt crank that's on there, arm that's on there, and it goes to the back. There's your two floats, main wing up there. Most everything is actually in the wings. Speed controllers are in here, engines are in there, and uh, your, uh, your servos for your flaps, all that stuff's in there. And then you've got your landing gear, your bolt-on landing gear, which just bolts to the bottom of this thing. And then you've got your parts bag, which includes uh, different fairings, um, and you've got uh, your vertical surfaces uh, that go into your uh, horizontal stabilizer, your two propellers that are nicely painted, and you've got your uh, your struts for your floats, and we'll get that together. And your instruction manual, which has an addendum, and we'll talk pretty closely about that. First thing I want to get into really is the fuselage. Uh, real nice quality uh, overall. Finish looks really nice. Um, I have noticed that the shiny paint seems to really yield and show off the beads, unfortunately, a little bit. So a little bit probably more gatoring than I'd like to see. It could be a one-off on that, or it might be the paint that's uh, really just kind of showing it off because it is kind of glossy. Usually a flatter paint, you usually don't see that with. But quality is very good. Finish is generally very nice. You can see, you can just see the, the cells in there a little more uh, than, than probably I'd like to see. So, uh, but anyway, there's your uh, nose. No lights up front here, but it does have a hard, uh, no, no, it's not a hard nose. It is a, actually a foam nose. It looked like initially it was a, it was a, uh, a plastic nose cone, but right here you've got your uh, bell crank. This connects and goes all the way back using that push rod for your water rudder. There's the push rod down there. And then you can see your landing gear here bolts on. Uh, we're gonna unscrew this, pull this off, put the landing gear on, and that's that's about it. Now the heart of it's all here in the center. Your AS3X is secured in there. If you look carefully down there, you can see some of the white silicone glue they use to affix this, because you want this to be pretty solid. You don't want it moving around, because it senses all the roll and the pitch movements of the airplane and uh, that gives you your stabilization. So your rudder servo's there. One going forward, one going back. One's for your uh, nose wheel steering, one's for your rudder. This is your uh, one of your antennas, your side antennas, your other antennas going forward. And I'll go ahead and pop this off of here. The canopy just comes up tongue and groove in the back. Magnet right there, rare earth magnet, magnet right there. Nice solid connection, strap for your battery. You can see your push rod right here for your um, your nose wheel steering. And then this I believe is a, uh, yeah, that's probably a bind, uh, a bind port so you don't have to, and the reason they do that, yeah, bind lead. They put a bind lead on because they don't want you lifting this up or messing with uh, the receiver much. You don't want to move it. You certainly don't want to peel it off because again, it's glued on there uh, intentionally. So um, canopy goes on real nice. Nicely applied decals. Uh, actually, there's stickers really uh, on there. Um, nice wood, um, I'd call it a doubler. That's where the wing screw, there's a single wing screw, tongue and grooves, or it fits in here with these two pins, the wing. You can see the pins right there. And then your single screw right there goes through the upper part of the wing and into there. And you're done. I don't know if that's a screw or a cam lock. Looks like there's threads in there. We'll look at it when we get closer. It could be a cam type. Uh, and then you got some corrugation on your uh, vertical stabilizer, your pass through here, your horizontal stabilizer right there. It, it plugs in from the side. It slides in here. And then you can see your screw holes. You've got four screws that just come up through the bottom, two there and two on that side. And that, that affixes your horizontal stabilizer uh, in place. Here's your uh, rod horn linkage for your, uh, for your vertical, uh, for your rudder. Here's your elevator. It's all in there and ready to go. Nice tough clevis in there. Looks real nice. And uh, that's about it. There's your elevator servo right down in there. So those are all mounted and ready to go. Now let's grab, uh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? Let me grab the horizontal stabilizer and we'll look at that real fast. Show you how easy that, uh, that fits into place. Um, you've got your corrugation, simulated corrugation that they put in here. That's all these little kind of louver-like looking things. On a full-scale airplane, that's to toughen up the, uh, the aluminum, the sheeted uh, uh, wing skin, and that keeps it from, from bending. It keeps it, uh, gives it some rigidity. Foam hinge here, folks, uh, and that is, uh, looks like it's laminated. I can see it shining back at me. Nice plastic center section. You've got a nice tough carbon spar running through here. These are your slots, one there and one there. And that's for the little vertical fins that are in that bag that go through there. I think you can just pop those on, but probably a little bit of uh, thin CA, foam safe CA, of course. 
and um, or some foam tack or something to keep that in position. So this is just going to slide, if I'm not mistaken, I have not done this before. Uh, that's going to slide, I believe, right into place from this side. It goes all the way through. There's some space for your uh, for your rudder to move there as well, obviously. Oop, that went too far with it. And then you've got your four screws. Your four screws go in there, and that's that's pretty much it for the assembly of your tail. Um, uh, you do have to uh, uh, attach your uh, your linkage right here, but other than that, there's just those four screws right there, and your horizontal stabilizer and elevator are already installed. So. I'll put that down there and we'll get that together here shortly because I'll do a little assembly even though this thing is so easy to get together. So uh, wing is really nice. It's long. It's long and it's thin. High aspect ratio wing, which means it's probably going to be more glider like than anything because it's long and it's thin. So, But the detail on it is, uh, is really nice. Uh, it looks like we got two lights on each wing tip that you can see right here. Very slick so that's going to give us some good lighting. There's another light right here, which they put a nice lens cover on. There's another one right here. And then you've got your wingtip lights there on this side as well. So well lit up model, it looks like. Rods, horns, and linkages, look, they're already on there. Uh, they did a little bit of a, uh, looks like a, a tape job or a plastic. Actually, that looks like a thin plastic, like a Lexan plastic they ran along there. So it's not really, not really tape, but the rod, the horn, the linkage is on. There's an older style linkage, but it's a tough linkage. It's very, uh, very nice, uh, nice thick pin on that thing. And uh, yeah, very play free. It looks real nice. Uh, laminated hinges all the way around. Again, a little shiny paint that shows off your cells of your foam a little more so than uh, than maybe normal. And then your speed controllers are in here. So it looks like, uh, at least I think they're in there. Uh, actually, they may be in the wings here. Uh, but anyway, all your wiring harness flaps, looks like your flaps, ailerons, yeah, ESC wires are all in there. There's your power wire. Uh, looks like they're Y harnessed. Yeah, ESCs are all in there and ready to go. In fact, the ESCs, uh, they are. Actually, they're buried in the engine. So that's probably the best place for them. That'll keep them cool. Let me flip around to this one. Let's see if we can see down in there. Yeah, speed controllers are buried down in there, and that's where you want them. There's exit cooling here, intake cooling here. So that's perfect. And I really like the way that they color coded, now that I'm looking at it, I really like the way they color coded your prop drives. And you see you have a nice knurled drive, so that'll bite in. Um, this one, I believe, is the uh, opposite. Or no, that's the correct rotation. Nope, this is the opposite direction one. So yeah, you definitely wouldn't want to lose that one. So they op, they counter rotate, they spin with a descending blade towards the inside of the uh, fuselage. There's your center screw or whatever cam lock attachment that is, where you uh, have your two pins that mount into the front of the fuselage, and then you've got your one screw to secure your wing. So uh, that's real nice overall, folks. I like the stall fences. Those are installed. They're tough plastic, so. You're not gonna you're not gonna break that off, but um, super nice wing, long and thin wing, and everything is ready just to be attached and plugged in and ready to go. So really nice, like that, really like that overall. And then here's your struts. I'm not gonna. Well, we'll take a look at those. Those are your struts for your floats, and uh, you can see here you've got a water rudder. You've got the uh, decal on the outside here. It looks like. And uh, they just secure together with some screws with those with those struts. So uh, nice float kit overall. They look real sharp. Uh, nothing really too noteworthy there, other than there's some plastic inserts there where you put your your rods or your uh, your struts through there, and uh, that's how you uh, you secure all that with screws. And then they do give you a little bind plug. I'll show you right there. We got bind plugs all over the place. Of course, we always have tons of those. And then the landing gear. Uh, let's look at this. Landing gear is pretty straightforward. Uh, that just Screws in place with screws. There's probably a set screw to put the front one on. Looks like there's a flat spot. You can see right there on the nose gear. Just wire struts. That's all you need for a plane like this. Don't need anything too advanced. Obviously, uh, your set screw is going to go into that flat spot. So you got nice foam, lightweight wheels overall, and that'll go. That'll go in position. So I didn't want to take all this off because I didn't want to lose it all before I put it together. Here's your struts for putting your floats together, and we'll get that together here in this video. And then uh, we've also got here, let's look, these are all parts. These are, uh, these are, there's your wing screw right there. There's your gigantic uh, wing screw overall. And um, um, let's see, you've got some, uh, I don't know if these are wing struts or tail struts or what these are for. Well, I'll look at it in the manual. I don't recall where exactly uh, those things are, 
are going to go. I have to see it on float. So those might be, oh, those are float uh, strut uh, covers, I believe. If you look at the picture down there, I think they just cover up the uh, the strut, uh, the wires or something. And it looks like there's maybe ones front and back. Well, I'm not 100%, but we'll get to it here in the assembly of this, uh, this whole thing. But all your parts bags are here. Um, they've got tons of, uh, these are your fins, your vertical fins that go into your horizontal stabilizer for additional uh, uh, directional stability. And your props, really nice. I love, the, I love having painted props like that that really stand out and they're counter-rotating. There's your spinners, those will go right on. And, uh, and there we go. So last but not least, we're at the instruction manual. The first thing I notice about the instruction manual really is it's in two parts. The first part right up front, they probably intentionally put the manual addendum in there. And they show you how to put the landing gear on, they show you how to get uh, your tail on, and they show you how to get your wing on. So, and uh, these are struts, oh here, these are pylon supports that we were just looking at that I thought were for the landing gear. They're for the wing right here. Maybe that's something additional to add. So you want to do the addendum first probably or look through that first because obviously there's something in the manual they didn't want to do a total manual reprint so they made the changes here so you want to look at this first. It's actually only the first like two or three pages too as well and uh, the rest of it is are in different languages. So they talk about, they show you here counter rotation of the props and they do go into battery installation at ESC arming. That's pretty straightforward. And transmitter setup. They go into a little more detail there, so that might be kind of critical. Uh, they talk about your control horn throws on your arms and stuff. And I think that's it. This might be uh, they re getting redundant here. Okay, there's some more stuff here. Float assembly and installation, they go into that. Then the next page starts into uh, the other languages. Uh, so, there's a, so that's really all you need to look at is those two pages. And then in the main manual, again, you want to make sure you do look at the addendum first because there might be some stuff in here that they don't want you doing that they made the addendum for. Uh, once again, uh, there's your dimensions on the airplane, setup guide, and so forth. Again, always go back to that addendum for the because for, that's really where the changes are. Uh, yeah, there's your struts. So again, the addendum may be addressing that. It's probably addressing this. So maybe there were some errors or something made in the original manual. But anyway, go through the addendum. Here's all your setup information, complete transmitter setup, which is pretty straightforward. It goes into dual rates. You choose your radio right along here. Let me get rid of this uh, addendum because that's making it uh, kind of a pain there. Um, this You go into your... Uh, talks about rates, throws, and I'm going to use a D, my DX9, so that's right down here. Talks about uh, flap switches and all sorts of stuff, rates, elevator stuff. So we'll we'll get this all tuned, set up, ready to go. Battery installation, ESC arming, center gravity. There we go. 45 plus or minus five back from the leading edge. I will talk about that more when we fly the actual airplane, and then they have transmitter, receiver binding, all this stuff, binding the receiver to the transmitter. This side is with safe select. That side is not and uh, we'll get it all bound up here for you and get it ready to go. Safe select, switch, safe select switch designation. We've done this a couple times already. If you guys have seen my video, when you get ready to sign the switch for your uh, safe select for your wing leveling and all that, if you arm it, both sticks down to the lower, uh, lower, lower uh, right and left corners to the inside and down, and you cycle your switch up and down five times. Uh, that's, that's one, two, three, four, five. So it's basically 10 movements of the switch, but five complete uh, cycles up and down. And that'll assign that switch to arm to put safe select on the wing leveling if you want it on or not. So talk about control surface, uh, surface centering, direction of things, dual rates and throws. Again, just to double check, I haven't looked at this thing that close, but make sure you look at the addendum and make sure you're not following something wrong in here. And uh, in-flight trimming, once you get it trimmed, hold everything there, keep the model hands off for three seconds so it kind of remembers the trims, I guess, is what that's doing. Flying repair, and that's about it. I think we're getting into, uh, uh, nope, that's still the English part. Uh, motors, see there's your counter-rotating props, talks about which direction they're going to go. CR's counter-rotating. Getting your floats together, your push rod, and where to, where to line that up and get it all set up so it's turning the water rudder correctly and then uh let's see uh they talk about model aviation on and that's about it for the manual i think guys uh anyway really nice model uh i'm digging this can't wait to get it together we'll put it together in fact i'm gonna kind of throw it together here for you guys now so you can kind of see uh how simple it really is now the first step in assembling the otter is really getting the underside done. I'm actually going to start with the uh, horizontal stabilizer uh, just because we had already slid it on and they give you a bag of these uh, 2 millimeter uh, by 10 millimeter 
um, just metric screws, and you only need four of them. Uh, you can secure the two right here, which you can see I already did. It was that simple. We already put it on. Two go right here, and you're all done. Notice here, I put a piece of fuel tubing, and I'll uh, I'll go ahead and I'll. Uh, I'll zoom in on that for you and how, how that goes on. I literally just stuck that right here. You want to slide it on, make sure it goes in place. For those of you who may have never put fuel tubing on before, I'll show you really fast how I'm going to do it here for the rudder. You just basically unclip this thing, uh, just take it out of position, and then you can see right here, I have just a little piece of fuel tubing on a pair of pliers. I just cut a, a little piece of it. And if you have to, you can close your clevis right here. Just use the, the pliers to sort of stretch it out and uh, get it over there. And then just, just sort of slide it on. This is actually a good kind because uh, this, this clevis, because it's actually pointy. And it's uh, relatively easy uh, to get this thing on here. Slide it past the pin, and then you're ready to secure it. Just reopen it. And I'll see if I can demonstrate it without you guys seeing my hand too much. You just put that, uh, that linkage right back on, pop it into place right there, and then you slide your, uh, your fuel tubing back on. And that's really it for the tail, folks. Landing gear is a little bit more involved, but not too bad. Let me, uh, let me zoom out uh, for everybody here so you can kind of see. In fact, I'll see if I can get the, uh, the nose gear on first. That's, uh, that's pretty straightforward. I'll, I'll zoom in so we can all kind of see what that looks like. It's uh, really just a little, a little pin right there. You take uh, your nose gear, which is this, okay, and it has a flat area on it. And all you have to do with that flat area, just slide this thing on or get it into position where it's going to go. And I'll angle this for you a little bit here. And then uh, we'll go ahead and we'll unscrew this thing until it goes all the way in. And we want to engage that flat area. And as we tighten this thing, it'll, it'll lock that uh, in place. So, and that's really it. You don't need any thread lock because you got aluminum here and that bites it. If you feel like putting some, put some on there, but it looks like it goes uh, into place pretty well. And you know, that's it, uh, that's it for, your, uh, for your nose gear. And then the main gear, that gets a little teeny tiny bit more involved here. Let me see if I can straighten this out. I'll get zoomed in so you can see what this looks like. First thing you do is just loosen this screw. I think it's 15 millimeters. And then just carefully just put something in here and lift this whole center plate off, Oop, which it just fell. And you can kind of see uh, what that looks like. It just kind of peels right off. And then you uh, expose this little wood area and then taking some of your, uh, you know, your 10 millimeters here, um, your 10 millimeter to, uh, or two millimeter by 10 screws, you're going to put your landing gear on just like this. You get these things ready to go. In fact, I'll position, I'll put the three of them right here so they're, they're pretty much ready to go. And then we're going to just take this and put this right down on top. And then we'll put these uh, in the place where they go. One here, one right here. And these are just your landing gear straps. Just make sure your, your fairings right here, in fact, I'll zoom out a little more. Just make sure these are in position here, these are in position here, and then you can easily locate these holes, which they'll, they'll pretty much bite right into once you get them pretty much lined up. Let's see if I can get one, uh, get one here without blocking the camera on you guys too much. And that's it, they bite in and you secure all six of these screws. Now, once you have all six screws completely installed, and there's some good bite on them, folks, because this plywood is pretty thick. I'm almost thinking that's almost quarter inch light ply there, so uh, there's some good bite on all these screws. But once you get them in place, then you just take your hatch cover, put it right back on, and then you secure, you finally secure that last uh, I guess it's uh, probably a fifth, two millimeter metric uh, by 15 in length screw. You secure that down into position and uh, your landing gear is in place. You can see what it looks like uh, all done there. And uh, we are ready to go. The next step is uh, securing the wing into place, which is really about as simple as it gets. There's only uh, four connections here. There's, uh, there's ailerons, there's flaps, there's the ESCs, and uh, the LED light. And you only have four here, they're labeled. And there's four on this side, and they're labeled. So you just kind of put them all together. So uh, I'll go ahead with uh, the first one here, which is the ESC. I'll uh, just grab that out of here and 
just push that on. Now prior to this, I actually tightened all my metal connectors. I just do that with a, a hobby knife or something just to push on those metal contacts. If you guys haven't seen that, just ask me. I might make a separate video, but I usually have it in all my videos and you guys probably have seen me uh, do that already. So we'll just get the get these all together really fast. Just make sure they're in there firm. Um, normally I'll often tape those, which I may go in and throw some tape on after I'm done with all of this. This is your flaps here. But for now, they're actually going on very, very tight. So we're probably gonna wanna secure these though somewhere so they're not flopping around because we got two servos in there that they could bind or get jammed on or something. So uh, we'll probably wanna keep those out of the uh, mechanical movement um, of the, uh, want to keep them out of the mechanical movement of the servos because there's one right there for the rudder um, and uh, there's one right here for the elevator and we just want don't want the connectors getting stuck in there and so forth so once all that's in there you got the same deal here here's your uh, your power wire that's going to really go just to the front of this thing and uh, let me get that all the way in here and then i'm also later going to secure my esc uh, wires like this one here all or my my uh my receiver wire. I want to straighten that out or put something here. Actually, it probably stays pretty straight, but you want to make sure that this one is horizontal and then this one, the one that we put up front, is 90 degrees to it, which is uh, in here somewhere. There it is. And we want to make sure that that's going front to back. So we'll tape that to the wall or something in here, but you want them 90 degrees to each other. That uh, helps to reduce or minimize the chance of a signal loss. So, and then what we're going to do is just tuck all these wires down in here and uh, go ahead and we'll put the front bullets of your wings, which you can see those are right here. These two plug right into the front here. We'll put that all down into place. We'll see if that'll fit. Uh, make sure there's nothing snagging in there. It looks like there's a little piece of plastic there that's kind of holding me up. And uh, let me see what that is. I'll push that all into place. Yeah, I can see how this could be a kind of a mess. Uh, getting in the way of those uh, those servos. So you want to push that in, make sure those are in position. This whole wing will drop right down. And then here's your uh, here's your wing bolt. It's actually just a single, um, and I'll, I'll get it up close to the camera here. It's just a threaded bolt. And it's really that easy to take on or off. Obviously they meant for this thing to be sort of a quick connect, quick disconnect. But the only thing you want to do really here, like I said before this, is we just want to find some way to maybe secure those wires to the top of the wing or something. So they're not getting in the way of those two servos. But that's, uh, that's pretty much for your uh, wing installation, um, just getting it in place. Um, and then we're going to flip the airplane upside down. And I have not actually done this part yet, but here's where your kind of cosmetic wing struts are. And I think one inserts right in there. There's a little slot there you put into place. And then this will snap into position, right like that. This one will go in pretty much uh, the same way. In fact, I'll flip that around so we can get a, a close look at how that, uh, what that looks like. And uh, same thing on this side we just did. We're gonna plug this uh, right on in there, all the way in. And then we're gonna snap this one in position. I think these are pretty much just cosmetic folks. There's nothing attached on the inside or to here. It doesn't mention anything about glue and uh, and that's really it. That's your wing struts in position. The last major step of assembly, at least for the, the main part of the airplane anyway, is putting these, uh, these uh, additional vertical fins in. These essentially just go right in here and right in here and then you can drop and they, they actually press all the way down in there and then you can do they say drop a little bit of CA in there if you want you can also use a little foam tack which is probably what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna put a little along here now here's the thing about these these are really only meant to go in um, one time because you can see they have a little bit of a tooth on there and you can see they're designed to go in this way and then keep them from coming out by that tooth biting in so one thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to slide this thing in position to test fit it all the way down in there and then kind of just then yank it back out. So what I'm going to do, and you can use a little drop of CA if you want, but I'm going to use uh, foam tack because that's pretty much, uh, I think foam tack's always been about the best thing to use on this kind of thing. And uh, it's probably best to use a brush doing this. I don't, you don't need a whole lot of this. And I'm just going to put a little on uh, this area of it here. You'll see where I'm putting it because you don't want it to make a mess if you put too much on it can kind of get all over the place. So I'm going to let this thing, uh, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to smooth it out a little bit. I'll just use my finger here a little bit. And then I'm going to let it tack up a little bit. I'll probably put a little bit on this surface actually here as well, just a tiny bit 
I'll use a brush to smooth that out or I'll use my finger to smooth it out. I'll let it tack up a bit and then once it's all tack up, tacked up, I'll make the final installation. Now that the foam tack glue is all tacked up, we're ready to put the parts together. So now one important thing you want to make sure is you really don't want to get any on this part. You don't want to get any actually in that crack so much because if you push this down, it's going to get all over this. It's going to ooze all over and then the bottom of this fin is going to have glue all over it. You can scrape it off, but rather than doing that, you want to keep it kind of clean. So there's some along this trench. There's some right in here along those edges. And then we should easily be able to get this in here glue free and be able to press this down into position. Now that's the first time and last time I'm going to install this thing and we can just clean away the rest of the glue. Most of it will beat up and then we'll just repeat for the other side. The last part of assembly is just putting this simply just putting the propellers on. I'm going to go ahead and put these uh, just kind of stick them right here where they're on the side that they're going to go on and then uh, you just unscrew the nuts and put the props on. Now it's really slick how they design this. Uh, the red side is the normal rotation. The green side is the opposite rotation. Uh, this one threads normally, the red one on the left engine, and the green one spins opposite, okay? It's, it's designed that way so that uh, as the propeller is turning, it's actually tightening the nut instead of loosening it. So it's kind of nice that they did that. It adds a little more expense to do that for a model, so it's kind of nice that they did that because it'll make sure that the props do stay on. So I'll back this one off. We will put this prop on. And you don't really want to over tighten these or anything. You want to make sure that they're just snug because you can crack the plastic anytime you're tightening down something that's plastic. And notice you want the descending blade uh, closest to the fuselage uh, going inward and downward. And you can see how nice those things rotate and uh, that will make sure you have the proper thrust and to make sure that the props <laughs> stay tightened uh, as, uh, as the propellers turn. So I'm just going to take a little wrench here and uh, actually see I got to go the other way I already forgot. You're going to tighten that up. Don't break the propellers doing it. Again it doesn't need to be super super tight. It will bite into the plastic and then once those are on there you're pretty much ready to go with the exception of the two spinners. Now there is a little screw. I think it's about two millimeters, I'm guessing. And that you're just gonna put right in there. And then uh, just take a screwdriver. And very carefully, it's easy to lose this thing. You're gonna kinda just put your screwdriver in there and uh, just tighten that down till it's, uh, till it's relatively snug. And uh, you'll be good to go. It's tightening it up nicely. I'll get the other one. I'll put that right on there as well. Just put them over the, uh, the slots in the prop there. And, uh, and that's pretty much it, folks. That is the major assembly before binding or doing anything else. So we'll pull this off of the stand. I'll stick the stand to the side. I'll go full zoom out here, uh, which I think I already am. And you can see how easy the assembly is uh, on this thing. It goes together very nice. It was actually very pleasurable uh, putting this thing uh, together. Um, and it's uh, just a super nice model all the way around. Now let's go ahead and uh, put the uh, floats together and I'll show you how those go on as well. Here's how the uh, floats look fully assembled with the fairings on them and uh, it's going to basically go on uh, just sort of the way you see it. These plastic fairings are cosmetic and they're meant to be put on sort of uh, after the fact. Um, and what I'm going to do is just to make uh, things a little easier because these are a pain to deal with when they're on before you put the floats on. They just snap on as you can see here. I'm just going to remove them so we can uh, have to not fiddle with them because they clank around a little bit. Once the floats are on, you'll throw those things back in place if you want to, and they're probably not even totally necessary. But you can see right here that um, these screws, uh, how, they, how each four of these mounts go on, it's, it's pretty darn simple all the way around. You can see there's literally just these wires that plug right into there. You see the two of these uh, kind of L bends at the end. They just go into place uh, the way that they were. And then this thing goes right down on top of them and screws them together. Now the rear of this thing can stay just the way it is when you mount it to the airplane. But these two actually have to come off. So you have to unscrew those two and these two screws to actually take these little pieces off because they're going to mount on the uh, sort of uh, from the outside, but they're going to go inside the airplane. Now the way that that looks, I'm going to slide the airplane over here so everybody can see how this is, how simple this thing is. Essentially what you're going to do is with this one screw back here for the landing gear that we already mounted, you can see clearly what you're going to do is you're going to unscrew these six screws and you're literally just going to replace this rear mount 
uh, right in its uh, current position. You can see here with the uh, main landing gear removed and the, uh, and the floats uh, installed here, you can go ahead and replace this cover and then get the front mounts on. It is important to note that if you're going to be changing these out a lot, you're going to want to put CA in these six holes, actually these seven holes, even the hatch hole here. You're going to want to put some CA in those holes to make those threads a lot tougher in the wood. Um, so you don't strip them because you're going to be taking, if, especially if you're taking them in and out a lot. So with the rear uh, mount installed, you're just going to flip this thing around here and we're going to now go in uh, through the, the front of this thing. So what we have to do is, is unscrew these right here, just loosen them a little bit. And then these front mounts, we're essentially just going to insert. There's a hole right here on the side. We're going to put these right in here. We're going to feed them in so they go underneath right there, that, that gear strap. And as we put that in place, you're going you're gonna to actually tighten the thing. So I'll go ahead and tighten this one down a little bit so it has a little bite and it's not just sliding out all over the place. And then same thing on the other side. We're going to insert that one in the hole. You can sight it uh, kind of right through here. You can see it uh, going in there. And then once again, I'm going to tighten one of these down to make sure hopefully that it doesn't slide out of there and tighten it up just a little bit and then you're going to go ahead and insert it right back into position here you can see how these uh if i can get this on the camera here we're going to insert that in there and we're going to take that plastic piece put it right back on the way we had it and we're going to secure those screws in place you can see here how nice the uh, floats look uh, attached to this thing. They're actually pretty rugged once you get them on. The next step really is that we need to put the uh, push rod in that goes all the way back uh, to the, uh, the water rudder actually, which is all the way down there. And we need to attach that to uh, this landing gear arm right here. And that's actually done fairly simply by just removing your nose gear. And you could even do this beforehand if you wanted to, but once you unscrew this, the nose wheel is going to pop out. And then this bell crank, actually the whole thing will actually come off of here. And I'll try and do this. It's kind of tough doing this without a stand, but let's give it a shot. Okay, that screw just came off. And then now we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove this arm. We're going to put the arm right on here. We're going to run this back between the struts because that's where it's supposed to go and then we're going to put this thing back on and see if I can get all this in there without actually dropping the screw so put that uh, put that over there for one second and you can see we'll just uh, tighten this thing up now once we have this thing completely tightened up and the push rod is in place we simply just go to the back of the water rudder and uh, we're going to attach our clevis right on here. Probably use a little bit of fuel tubing as well, and we'll just snap that into position. Now, once that's snapped into position, we should have some control of the water rudder, but here's the thing. We got this, uh, this push rod here that's intended to be attached uh, to the fuselage, kind of like right along here, or, uh, or even along, uh, or actually not the fuselage, but the actual, the actual strut. So as that thing comes along, we're probably going to secure it down here or we'll secure it down here. Otherwise, if it's flexing, you can see when it's flexing, it's just actually moving the rudder a bit. So we'll secure that in place. I also speculate that we may not even need the water rudder. That might be something I can just remove and then just use uh, you know, prop wash over the rudder. But we'll mess with that. As I get out to the float field uh, and I'm flying this, I give you guys a water demo, which I'll do here uh, pretty soon with it. Um, then I'll talk a little bit more about how that linkage and you can see it right there how how you actually attach it to it so it, it actually works well we'll talk about that again during the flight demo now that we have the airplane fully assembled i went ahead and i took the floats off the airplane i put the uh, wheels back on i put this thing on a tabletop and we're ready to bind it i also removed the wing so we can actually see the receiver in the bind light you can see it through here using the bind plug here. I just, it's hard for me to get a camera in there and I figured I'd show you how this looks. Everything is plugged in, everything's wired, everything's ready to go, uh, but this just makes it easier for me to demonstrate it so you can see the, the bind light and all that kind of stuff. I also removed the propellers because it's just a little safer when you're binding this thing. You really don't want those on there. You don't want them spinning up, going haywire if you bump the throttle or something and, you know, getting hurt or tearing up the airplane or something like that. And um, uh, we're pretty much ready to go. So uh, it's important to note a couple things. Uh, 
the the bind wire right here is pretty sweet. They have listed on here um, a Cliff's Notes version of the AS3X uh, binding procedure. So it just says uh, if you only want AS3X, leave the plug in while you're initiating the transmitter bind. Okay, and on the other side, it has if you want safe select, remove the bind plug prior to initiating the trans uh, uh, the, uh, the TX the transmitter bind. So it's kind of nice they put that on here in case you forget. That's the Cliff's Notes version of what is actually in the manual. Let me show you right here. Binding with safe select uh, active so you can assign a switch to it. It's just this simple in this tiny version with an expanded here. And then they also have it here in a simple version if you're binding without safe select. And they have the expanded version here. So it's kind of nice. They give you a little mini micro version of it right here just in case you forget which way to do it you need to bind out at the field. Also, I did go ahead uh, with my model memory and everything. I went ahead and added uh, a memory to this, uh, which is something you want to do first. And you can see right here, Twin Otter, it's all set up and it's uh, ready to go. I'll go ahead and switch that thing off and we will initiate our bind process. So pretty much, simply, all we have to do, since we're doing this in safe select, we'll go ahead and we'll put our uh, bind plug in the correct way. Maybe that's probably a good idea. Put that thing in there. I have a three cell battery. This is a 2200 smart pack which works in this plane and any three cell battery uh, will do and if I can get this wire out of here move this out of the way we'll go ahead and plug this thing in. You'll see our light flashing on our receiver right there and since we want to do safe select we want to be able to sign a switch to safe mode we're going to go ahead and pull our bind plug out of here and this thing's ready to bind. We got our memory set up on our radio already so we're going to press our bind button, turn our radio on, and let this thing go ahead and bind up. We move it about a few feet away. Binding. DSMX 22 milliseconds. We'll see our light go solid. Bind complete. There's our solid light right there. Our flight controls will run through. There are two checks, and we are now uh, fully bound up and ready to go. I'll release my switch. Everything's in there ready to go. I can do a little quick flight control check, make sure everything is working. I'll go ahead and put my flaps down, make sure those are working. I had already prior set these things up, so they are ready to go. And, uh, and that is it. We're ready to go. Do a quick check to make sure everything is uh, binding properly. I'll go ahead and unplug this, and I'll re-plug it in and see if it binds up normally. We should start getting a solid light there. Light control checks are going. And that's it. It's bound and ready to go. Now that the binding procedure is complete here, it's usually easiest just to move on to the uh, safe select switch designation, which means we're going to pick a switch uh, that we want to assign for safe mode, and we're going to assign it. We're going to designate it. All we're really going to do is take our uh, two transmitter sticks, move them to the uh, inside lower corners, and whichever switch we want it to be, which is uh, has to be on uh, channels five through nine, we're going to take that switch cycle it up and down uh, five times. Um, it's important to note that your rates have to be 100%. If you're down in low rates and you try and do this, it won't work. So just, you know, put your rate switches back up to 100. In my case, my elevator, I usually run over here. My aileron, I run over here. And you can see those are in the upper position. So we should be good to go. I'll move my sticks to the uh, lower corners, uh, lower inside corners. And then we'll cycle uh, this thing five times. You hear that little twitch? That little twitch in the flight controls means that it has designated the switch I, I, I decided on to be in safe mode. Now, whether you use a three position or a two position switch, uh, and most of them actually are three, but the upper position is usually safe mode on. The middle and lower positions are safe mode off, and it's really just that simple. Setting up your transmitter is uh, pretty straightforward uh, with all these planes from E-Flight. Uh, they do have uh, some pretty good guidance here. High rates at 100, low rates at 70. And uh, Expos, I didn't use. I left mine out because I just don't like Expo uh, in my radios. But you guys set them up how you like them. Uh, and then right along this left column, you choose your radio. I'm using a DX9. And it pretty much uh, has you go into the uh, system setup. Uh, airplane mode, select one aileron and one flap for your flap type. Uh, there are two flaps on the plane, but these run through a Y harness, so it's only one channel. So it's one aileron and one flap. Uh, there is no gear on this airplane, so I'm not sure why that's there. <laughs> and then uh, we have uh, switch D is what I assigned for my flap. So, and then go into the function list. And you can see here, actually, I set up everything uh, exactly the way 
in my radio exactly the way the book says, and I've actually been flying the airplane already, so it has worked out quite nicely. Speed of two is usually best for flaps, usually two or three. Three I find a little slow, but uh, you can see switch is designated to D, and all of those elevator rates and everything worked really nicely, and that's really it for setting up your radio. Before wrapping up this review, there's a few notes I want to make about a couple of things in the manual here. Uh, one is the, uh, the AS3X control direction test. This is basically where you're testing that the uh, controls are indeed correcting in the proper direction for your, uh, your stabilizer. Um, now, you don't act, the stabilizer in the airplane is not active until you come above 25% on your throttle. Once you come above 20% on your throttle and bring it back, it's now active and it's giving you uh, wind corrections and so forth. So um, once it's making those corrections, you want to make sure on the ground before you take off, at least the first time you fly it, make sure they're operating in the right way so you just kind of bank and pitch and roll your airplane. Uh, we'll talk about that a little more during the flight demo, but uh, you could check that in your shop when you're setting up, just make sure everything's correcting in the correct direction. Second thing, trimming. Um, um, you do want to make sure that when you trim the airplane level flight, that once it's level, it's trimmed the way you like it, let it stay there for three seconds without the displacing any controls. Let it fly in a straight line for three seconds. What, I, what this does is it kind of resets the center point of the servo and it makes it so you don't creates uh, it makes it so you don't create a dead band at the end of your stick travel one time i was trimming i trimmed my airplane and then i immediately went into maneuvering and then i realized uh, in landing like i didn't have full travel on my elevator and that's because i didn't give it three seconds <laughs> to to actually neutralize get a center position and then then sort of designate the endpoint. so when you trim let the plane fly in a straight line for three seconds, all trim, nice and smooth, and then start putting your inputs in, and, and you'll you'll be good to go. Also, the control throws uh, seem to work. They don't have to be perfect. I did set mine up pretty much the way this was for your aileron, elevator, rudder, and flap travel. Um, doesn't have to be exact, but these worked out actually pretty good for me. Uh, and then one of the next things you want to do really is your flight controls. Just make sure everything's all even. Make sure your ailerons, your uh, flaps, everything's all lined up so everything's neutralized. Everything's straight. Same with your elevator. There's my uh, radio barking at me. And then last of all, once we get our battery in, our preferred battery, CG. 45 millimeters to 5 millimeters. I actually found that about 40 works because I've actually been flying the plane. And I think a little ahead of that is probably a little bit better, a little more stable. But I'll talk about that more in the actual flight demo. One last tip I have for the uh, battery compartment in the Otter here is to uh, have some way of securing your battery to the floor. This is an unusual floor because it has a lower kind of void here. This is the mount for the, uh, the floats that uh, kind of go right through here. Uh, it's got this void between these two pads. So you can put some Velcro down here, Velcro your battery down, uh, maybe even in the back, and then secure it with this strap. But I went ahead and used my standard trick where I go ahead and I take my shelf liner with double-sided scotch tape. I secured one pad here one pad here and uh, and then we can put the battery uh, kind of uh, to traverse sort of that that void now up in the front of this thing you can see there's a little kind of a hump here that we may or may not be able to actually cut into if we need to move a battery shift it forward or something but the preferred battery on this airplane uh, uh, is this uh, 3200 uh, spectrum smart battery and it fits in there really nice it's a three cell pack and uh, you can see right here with this uh, with this uh, strap out of the way um, I'll show you how I've, I've actually been flying the airplane, so this is how I've been putting mine in here. It actually fits in here really nice, and it bridges that gap, and uh, you can see we have a sticky pad here at the front, a sticky pad there at the back, and uh, if I can get this uh, strap out of here and secure this down, you really want to do this with, uh, with two hands. I'm just doing it with one because... Uh, I've got the uh, the extra camera difficulty here, but once we get that strapped across, this battery won't move. It's got that hump to lean on the front, and then it kind of sticks between those two sides there. And then with that shelf liner with two hands strapping this down, it's really not going to move anywhere. And I get a CG of about 40 uh, millimeters from the leading edge, so it seems to fly really well there, and this shelf liner works like a charm. Okay guys, that pretty much concludes this video on the E-Flight Twin Otter coming from Horizon Hobby. Check it out there. Uh, we do have links below uh, in our description below the video. If you guys choose to get one of these and you use our links, that does support our channel and we really do appreciate that. Um, this is uh, pretty nice folks. You can see from this unbox, assembly and setup, it's pretty fast to get this thing up and going and out to the field. 
Um, just to recap, your horizontal stabilizer slides into position. You have four screws underneath and you connect your rod. Uh, these two vertical fins, you just glue those into place. I do recommend foam tack over foam safe CA. I think it's a little bit better. And then uh, your whole wing that's already assembled, you just put that on, connect your wires, and you get your, uh, your one big bolt on. You could take that off to remove the whole wing, but the size of this is so nice that it's pretty easy to transport it kind of just as is. Um, and then uh, also for your wing, your, uh, your pylons, your struts, these are non-structural. They just pop off. You just sort of remove them, and that's easy enough uh, to get those things on and off. Uh, if I can see this to pop it uh, back into place see how easy that is and then your main landing gear there's one hatch right here you, uh, a one hatch screw you pull that off you got six screws to put your landing gear on and that's primarily how you get your rear mount uh, on for your floats as well and then your nose gear is a single screw to get that on real simple then your props and spinners they bolt on with two one one bolt and screw each and 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 that's it folks that's really about it for uh for getting this together. Your, your front screws here are your front uh, mounts for your floats. The floats are real nice. I haven't had it on the floats yet. I've been flying it, but I haven't had it on the floats yet. All you have to do is disassemble these two front sections and then these little pins, they go into each side of the fuselage and there's like four screws that you attach those on with. So getting your floats on is real easy. And then with your water rudder as well, it's got a rod that hooks onto that uh, that, uh, that front horn and it's uh, really simple. So I'm dying to get these videos out for you. We do have flying videos. I probably put a flying clip at the beginning of this video and I'll probably maybe put one at the end. And then for all the flying videos on this and all other associated with videos, they're on the RC Informer YouTube channel, channel, so check it out there. Or in the upper right hand corner of all my videos, guys, uh, there is that white eye there. You'll see the menu come across here. If you click on that right now, even, it'll drop down right now. It won't stop the video. It'll drop down a, wind, uh, a drop down window where you'll see all the other associated videos um, for this airplane. So it's just real convenient, real easy for you guys to access everything. Each of the videos will have that link that you can click to all of the others. So they'll all be linked and all the information's in one place. So anyway, this thing is awesome. I'm real impressed with some of the details on this thing. In fact, um, I'm gonna show you a few. The lighting package on this thing is pretty darn awesome. In fact, I'm gonna put this right up to the camera. You can see how nice those flashing wingtips are. There's a red on one side with a flasher. And then of course uh, the other side there, green with a flash, you can see how bright those are. And then off in mist, there's even one on the vertical, which uh, you know you, you kind of don't necessarily see unless it's pointed out. But at dusk, this thing really lights up well. Uh, even uh, landing lights as well, you can see how nice, I'll see if I can get those up there. So you guys can see there's one there and then there's uh, one on the other wing right there as well. So this thing is fantastic. It really lights up. And then the other thing I like is these propellers are pretty slick. The painted stripes on there, especially on a dark background. I'm going to take my safety off, my throttle kill, and uh, give you a little bit of power here. You can kind of see how nice those things are. I and mean, they really show up against a uh, dark background. They really contrast well. So I'll go ahead and I'll get my safety back on there so that doesn't power up. And that's it, folks. You got your hatch right there easy enough to get your uh, your batteries in place for this thing i'll be flying uh the recommended packs which are the spectrum 3200 i think that flies at the best and then also the 2200 they're both 30 c's and i'll have links for those also uh below the video as well folks if you guys want to get those matched batteries and i'll be showing those to you in the flight video and how they actually fit in the in the in the airplane uh, at the flying field but Overall sweet airplane, folks. Uh, for more videos uh, on, on this airplane and others, just uh, check out RC Informer. Please like and subscribe to get the latest videos coming to you. In the lower right-hand corner below the video, if you hit that notification bell, bell that will actually send you though anything we put out new, you guys will be the first to get. So anyway, Twin Otter, folks, E-Flight, coming from Horizon Hobby. Pretty sweet airplane. I will have this at events to come because it just is that nice of a model. Uh, and we do appreciate you guys checking out RC Informer. Thanks for stopping by, folks. And as always, we'll see you next time. Roll it inverted. Nice. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> you get that okay? Yeah. All right, here, I'll come back around and go inverted this way. You ready? There we go. Yeehaw, baby. Let's push it over.
roll it around. I don't know how good a negative it does. And we're kind of confined here, so let's see. I'll, I'll get the flaps in. Flaps are down full. I'll bring it by the camera nice and smooth, babe. Nice and slow. It crawls. Look at that. Outstanding. Outstanding. 